to spill a PLA in the morning. Yeah. All right, we're gonna build an S Drive Max today. What is an S Drive Max, you ask? Well, I recently got an Atari 800. I'm getting to relive my childhood to some extent. It was one of my first computers was the Atari 400. The S Drive Max is a device that allows us to plug in a micro SD card and access that micro SD card like it was one of the Atari drives such as the 810 or the 1050. There's this wonderful website on the Atari8bit.net that has some tutorials that we're going to follow to build one of these. If we look through the website, you can see that there's instructions. It's built on the Arduino, and I'll show you what I'm using. It talks about the different kinds of screens to use. Some case designs that I've already 3D printed a case for. I'll share that with you shortly and a wonderful set of instructions on how to build your own SIO connector and connect it all up to the Atari and install the software and boom maybe I get to play Seamus today. All right with that we'll head on over to the lab bench heat up the soldering iron and get started on this really cool project. See you over there. All right, so let's talk about how we're going to make an S-Drive Max. What we need is a 3D printer, or you can order these. This is the case I 3D printed, uh, and an SIO connector. This is the classic Atari connector. You're going to need some wire to make your SIO cable, your Atari cable. In this case, I picked up some wire that had... Uh, I don't even know, 13 wires, I think, inside of it, um, bundled inside. So what I've done is um, I have gone through and crimped these connectors using a crimping tool. And then they need to be inserted into the SIO connector. Now, the website has a diagram, which I'll put up as you're watching this video and it shows the placement of each of these. Now, one of the things you can't probably see very clearly here is, you only need five wires for one. But what you can't see very clearly here is, there's a little tab here. And you need to make sure that tab is pointed up so that when you do insert this into the connector, that it stays. Now, if I hold this up and look at how this is in there, let's see, we got yellow. Yellow is the last one to go in. It goes on the bottom. And basically, you just kind of push it in there until it snaps or doesn't come out again. So that little metal clip holds it in place. That's how it works. On the other end, I basically tend the other connections, and we're going to hook those onto the Arduino board. So we can actually do that right now. Basically, again, following the directions. All you need to do is hook them into the right locations. So if we look, they have a number of Arduino boards that they suggest. This one actually both has the pen headers, but it also has solder positions next to the pen headers, which is really nice. It also has some solder positions here, um, and as well as over here for both transmit, receive, uh, 5 volt, and ground. That's what we're going to do. We're actually going to power the Arduino and the screen from the Atari. There is an option if you don't want to do that, um, in which case you don't want to hook up the 5 volts, that 5 volt line. However, I'm going to hook up the 5 volt line. So following the diagram that you see on your screen, the first thing we need to do is tie, um, let's see here, we're going to tie yellow to A5. Yep, A5. So I'm going to go in and solder that up. Okay, that looks pretty good. Next one we're going to do is it looks like blue is going to go to, let's see here, 
they have it going to ground, it looks like. Yep, blue, red, I'm following the order. So we gotta do blue. should have pulled out a little bit more wire to 10. Okay. Oh, man. I used to solder every single day at work. But not anymore. So I'm basically going to clip that off, pull off some more, solder it, and then because I have solder in that hole, I get to go back and clean it. I'll show you how I do that since this is a real world. Grab a little uh, desoldering. Wick, heat it up. Sometimes you have to add some to it. And the other trick is sometimes heat it up and pop it down. You can get it to open up. Yep, like I just did. Okay. So it's going to be blue. Red. Yep. Blue, red, green, purple. Blue, red. Good. And finally, purple. I was just removing a little solder there. I was keeping it from going into the hole. Alright, well, that's all there is to it. That's per the diagram on the site. So now what we do is uh, go ahead and put the case on this. I'm going to go ahead and spread out some of those wires, put the case on, turn it over. These are uh, M310s, uh, M3 10 millimeter screws. Okay, that should be that. Now we need to put it in the case. The screen I'm using is the one that was recommended. Put this way, I don't need it. It's the one that's recommended on the site, Elegoo or something like that. Um, you might be able to get it cheaper online. Uh, I've got this one from Amazon, but you might be able to get it cheaper from China or something. Um, it basically is a hat, and it fits right on top of the um, Arduino. And the pens, you just follow basically the way they fit in there. You can't kind of miss it. Um, they sit right on top of there. And then the um, micro SD card can actually go into it as well. It's kind of a nice design, the way that they're both um, integrated. So now what we need to do is, I reamed this out a little bit, this case, um, because of the thickness of the cable. So I'm hoping it fits a little bit better. We'll see. Um, so basically what you need to do is a stick. We're gonna mount 
the Arduino inside. Let's see here. There we go. All right. And then there are some little pins here on my printed, the bottom of my case, that are supposed to line up with these and actually hold the board in place. So let me see how this actually fits in there. I'm looking at the screen portion right now. You know, it really wouldn't hurt to hit it with a little bit of hot glue or something like that. Um, kind of your choice. I think I'm just going to kind of set it in there for now. Make sure everything's working before I would go do something like that. So again, uh, M3 10 millimeter screws. And it looks like I could have reamed this out even more. But it's probably not a bad idea it's in there tight. It's going to keep it from getting pulled. There's no strain relief in there right now. So it's kind of working as a strain relief. Let's see what we got. When we get these screws in place. Okay. All right, that's not bad. Um, it's not perfect by any means. There's a little bit of a gap here, but... That can be fixed after you're done testing it, making sure everything's working right. You can always open it back up again. Um, yeah, not bad. Okay, so that's pretty much it. That's an S-Drive Max. Uh, Arduino Uno, uh, we soldered some wires together. We made an SIO cable, and now we've got it. Now we just need to go back over to the computer and download the software to make this thing work. Now it's time to install the software on the S-Drive Max. The first thing you need to do per the website is, is take the uh, micro SD card that you have formatted as FAT32. I already did that. Um, you simply plug it into your computer and click format and choose FAT32. The next thing we need to do, I actually need to plug in the S-Drive Max into my computer so that we can run the XLoader software. So now we scroll down and under Windows it explains we're going to need the XLoader software and the software from this GitHub page. I've already downloaded that and it states that we need to install the EEPROM first, the EEPROM underscore writer hex file first before the S drive software. So I've already downloaded those and we're going to run the XLoader. Now one of the first things we need to do with the XLoader is to choose the correct device. I'm using an UNO, the port it's on, and then the file. Um, I've chosen, if we go back and look, this is the S Drive Max subdirectory after it's been unzipped. And I'm pretty certain that this is my video driver. Um, I'm going to go ahead and double click that and say upload. Drink a cup of coffee. Okay, it's done. It's already uploaded. And the screen is doing something. Okay. Now what we want to do is upload the S Drive Max and do the same thing. Okay. All right, and we have a plus on the screen, which I think is what we're supposed to have. So let's go back over here and see what happens. Your S Drive Max should spring to life and present you with the first screen calibration cross. Tap each cross in turn, it will change color and the next color will appear. When you have done all four crosses, the S Drive Max will give you the screen coordinates. Tap the screen to finish, and the S Drive Max, Max display should appear ready to use. Okay, so <clears throat> let's go do that. One second. I went and grabbed the pen that came with my screen.
All right. Oh, cool. All right, it's up and running. Let's see if I can reposition this and show you. See that? Um, then we are supposed to copy the S drive.atr from the software folder to the root of the SD micro card and put it into the drive. Okay, so hold on. Let me unplug it. Let me take the, S the card out. I'm putting the card into my drive. And now we want to copy this file, this S drive ATR. We're going to copy that to here. Okay. Now we're going to pull it out. I'm going to put it back into the S drive max. Okay. Got it in there. Um, let's see if I can set it up so you can see. Okay, now I'm going to plug it in. Okay. And let's see what the instructions say now. When you add your ATR, uh, XEX, CAS files to the macro, the order they appear in on the card is the order they will appear in the menus. The S drive max does not sort file names. Um, okay, well, it's installed and working. So what I need to do is plug it into my Atari 800 and let's see what we can do with it. So I'll come back and talk to you in a few moments after we're ready to do that. Okay. We've got the S Drive Max hooked to the Atari computer. I did have a few issues that I'm going to explain. I believe I understand what they're from. It's a timing issue. Um, I am using the power of the Atari to drive this unit. Um, also, one thing, at the bottom of the documentation on the website we're using, it mentions using a different S Drive ATR file for the 800 versus the XLs. So I did install that instead of the STR that came in the zip file um, with the video driver and the rest of the software. So let's see. So if I turn it on, we'll see that it actually comes up. And I'm using two cameras here so that you can see. But we get the memo pad. But we actually do see that the S drive is actually up and running. Now, if we power it off and press the start button at the same time, we'll get like a pause, but we do have power here. Now, if I hit reset, you can hear it. Now it's actually talking to the S Drive Max and it's loading the S Drive software. So we can actually see the S Drive software. So I downloaded a few classic games that I liked, and we're going to try one or two of them. So looking at the S Drive Max, you actually have an option. If you want, you can just choose the interface. Let's see. And let's put Choplifter on it and say OK. And now we can boot from D1. So that's what it's doing. It's booting from D1. I don't know if that's clear, but you can certainly hear it booting. That was the classic Atari you know, loading data. Now you'd come home from school, you'd either with a cassette, you'd start loading your favorite game, or if you were lucky enough to have a disk drive, you'd start your game and go grab a, a drink or something. So we've got uh, Choplifter here, loaded. And the first sortie, classic game, love it. Now what we'll do is we'll go back, and instead of doing Choplifter, I'm going to choose Seamus, say OK, do a reboot. Now it should start loading Seamus. That color is really dark. I don't know if it's the 
monitor or the game? It's kind of weird looking. I've got a big bright light on overhead. And that's a little bit better. Let's start it. And that actually looks pretty normal. At least I think it is. It's been a long time since I played this, but yes, I'm going to play some Seamus here in a few minutes. So that's it. We got it working. Um, if you have the similar problem, you might try the boot and the start button. You also might try to not um, use the Atari's power. You can clip that 5 volt line and actually just power the device by itself, that, the S drive by itself. I'm um, using the, you know, using the input. I think that'll take like 5 to 10 volts or something. Just check the specs yourself. So to make this work for me, what I had to do one more time was to power it on and press start at the same time. Which, when the screen would come up, that's when I would hit reset. Which will cause the D0 drive to start up and show me the S drive software. And from this, you can actually still do all the stuff. Like, let's say you want to load um, something into drive one, like Choplifter into drive one. All you do is choose it and press enter, and then it actually brings it over. And it even brings it over on the screen down here, which is kind of nice. So, there you go. We actually built an S drive max. We got it working. Um, I'm going to go off and have some fun here once I put these videos uh, in my computer. So I'm going to play today. All right. Atari.